And then I got exposed to, to the Barbary Wars. And I knew a little bit about it in social studies, a little bit in history, found a little bit about it in college. And then when, after 9-11, when you heard about the Islamic threat and the Islamic extremists, and we tried to make heads or tails of it, I'd see great columnists look back and try to, re uh, and try to retrieve this information. And I thought, wait a second, what are you talking about? Islamic extremists, I thought they were pirates. Oh yeah, they had pirate activity, but they were motivated and pushed and used it as an excuse, uh, the Quran and Islam to attack us, and we had no ax to grind. After all, my book picks up, our book picks up in 1784 and 1785. We're an economy who just got rid of the British rule, but we also lost British protection. And we're out in the open seas, buried in war debt. We do what the Americans always do. We try to work our way out of it. We got to get our economy going, and we're going to get it going, we're going to get it roaring, because we got this thing called ingenuity, hard work, and tremendous natural resources. So to do that, we're going to have to use the Mediterranean. And we're going to have to use the southern half of the Mediterranean to be able to get the southern half of, of Europe. So as we go through those waterways, we have a little bit of a problem. There are these pirates who see us as a soft touch, as an easy mark. And they began to take our ships. From the Dolphin to the Maria to the Betsy, they take our guys. And they take them, not only imprison them, they make them slaves. They not only take our ships, they take the cargo. They plunder them. And then when we start, try to stop it and try to make uh, heads or tails of it, the explanation is, you're infidels. We have the right to do that, unless, of course, you want to pay us a certain amount of money. Really? Is that in the Quran? Yeah, it's in the Quran. So we don't know much about it. So we decide to send our A-team out there. In London, we have this guy named John Adams, future president of the United States. In France, we have this other gentleman named Thomas Jefferson. So we decide that the best way to approach this is to begin talking to them and try to find out what their rationale is for taking our stuff, taking our guys hostage, and imprisoning them. Because we are not Spain, we're not France, your problem's with them, we're brand new. So they go into London, and they set up a meeting with the ambassador to Tripoli, now Libya, and they do, uh, Thomas Jefferson decides uh, he's gonna join John Adams on his request. So they go in and meet the ambassador, and they have a great conversation. The guy seems amiable, he seems approachable, he seems like somebody we can deal with. Until, of course, the, it came down to decision time, at which time he talked about the rationale for capturing our guys and taking our stuff, and citing the Quran. Now, Jefferson read the Quran. He says, it's not in there for you to do this. We don't have a problem with you. Having said that, they said, there's only one way out. You gotta pay the money. We don't have any money, so we leave. We find out what Spain was paying, we find out what France was paying, we find out what Sweden was paying, and we are, we are actually getting charged more than that. And we don't have the revenue. And both John Adams and Thomas Jefferson leave with the same sentiment. They're horrified and they're angered, but they have different marching orders from here on in. John Adams, to paraphrase, essentially said, look, we can't fight these guys unless we want to fight them forever. Man, is that right? And America doesn't have the stomach for a long war. Man, is that still true? Thomas Jefferson comes out and says, listen, I'm looking in their eye. I'm understanding these me the message I get from this meeting is the price is only going to go up, and sooner or later the attacks are going to begin again. I say we fight them. We don't have a government. We don't have a constitution. We don't have a president. But the recommendation back is essentially we're going to go with Adams, and we're going to find a way to borrow the money and make the payments. So the trade begins again. But like Marco Rubio, our payments are a little bit late. Only kidding. <laughs>